Well, first of all, thank you for inviting me here. I'm very grateful. And I'm going to speak about a small scale, maybe a little funny experiment with anthropomorphic images, contemporary. Uh, well, I will focus on, on uh, rock features because I'm interested in them a lot and I'm interested in their roles in prehistoric landscapes. Well, what we know from historic record and ethnographical record that rock features or big stones, boulders, uh, usually have a strong meaning. They have important roles uh, for living communities in their religion, mythology, and so on. And, but we can ask why, or we can ask since when the, the stones or the rocks uh, had played these roles. So, since Paleolithic times, upper Paleolithic times, we can see that uh, humans you know, paid attention to rock surface as uh, these two examples from uh, the cave Altamira in northern Spain can show us here. And they combine uh, the rock surface with, uh, with their imagination or projection of animal shapes. Here's another case, uh, uh, another example from French cave called Niort, also from the Upper Paleolithic. Well, these two examples are from my country, Czech Republic, Bohemia and Moravia, and uh, the, the, the picture on, the, on your left uh, resembles very to human face, and it's located on the edge of a big uh, rock feature, and it's well uh, known by local communities, but there are no signs that, these, that this was made by humans, so it seems to uh, originate it naturally. And the other face is located on the, on the rock, uh, sandstone rock. Also, uh, it was not made by humans, but is widely recognized by contemporary humans living uh, nearby. Sometimes uh, rock features do not have uh, a very clear resemblance to, to, hum to, to anthropomorphism or human shapes like this one. This comes from California, and a local tribe of Wintu people recognize, uh, recognizes it at, as a bag of bones, as you can see on the picture on your right, drawn by their shaman. But well, back to prehistoric landscapes in Central Europe. Uh, when you have kind of menhir or megalithic art, you can be sure that people paid attention to, to that stone, to, deck, to that rock feature. But what about the stones that do not bear any traces of human modification? Can we also think about them as a part of the, of the landscape of, of prehistoric people? I think we can. And I choose uh, rock features because they are immovable and uh, relatively speaking stable in their shapes or forms. But it depends on material and uh, local conditions, weather conditions and environmental <coughs> conditions. Well, so I did a small scale experimental study uh, where I focused on processes by which uh, the rock features can uh, get our attention, attract our attention, and to uh, provoke our imagination or projection of our inner images to, to them. And I was uh, curious if there uh, can be some, let's say, patterns that can be shared within a community. So these are my more specific questions about my study, so I was uh, curious if, if there, is some, there are some parts of rock features that are the most attractive for human imagination, or if there are some uh, specific characteristics of rock surface that provokes our imagination most, or I was interested also in uh, various kinds of motives that can appear when we uh, are looking at the rock surface, and and so and so. Let's jump in the... Ah, okay, okay, sorry. I focused on two kinds of data because I asked people to uh, draw 
what they can see on the rock surface. And so I have drawings, pictures of their inner images, and uh, they consist of, uh, let's say, objects like human, animal, and so. And these objects can be combined into motifs, like a human being is sitting and holding a baby or something like that. And I tried to, uh, to search for patterns in the graphics of the pictures. And I also have uh, interpretations, because I ask people also to, to uh, write some uh, short commentaries about the meaning of their pictures. What do they think they draw? And this is uh, one place that I uh, was interested in. Uh, it's a place in the northern Bohemia, in the uh, big mountain range, and it's located on the southern slope of a mountain range dividing Bohemia and Germany. And on a small promontory that you can see here, on the edge of the promontory, there is a, this, this one feature. And uh, about 10 years ago, uh, some metal detector uh, prospectors illegal or illegally uh, found uh, Bronze Age uh, X, Bronze Bronze Age X. So me and my colleagues did some kind of a rescue survey metal with metal detectors and uh, found other two sickles from Bronze Age, let's say late, final, late or final Bronze Age. They are almost the same shape. Uh, they were deposited nearby themselves. Uh, we can find uh, an X and two sickles. So it's possible that the, uh, all the three artifacts were deposited at one uh, moment. And also we found a piece of rock crystal of this size, which is very unique in our country. So we can, from the archaeological point of view, we can say this place is, was very important at least in the final or late, late or final Bronze Age. But uh, to, to get some uh, well, I, I should say it simply, I was curious if people can see something in the shape of this rock or on its surface. So I took this photograph. This is the first one. And this is the second one. Oh, sorry. And I can attract your attention to this part, this upper part, with, which for me very resembles very well to human head, but let's wait. And I asked people to draw, if I ask people if they see anything in these pictures, in these photographs. So, I asked 100 respondents, 50 males, 50 females, and uh, all the respondents uh, draw something. Well, as you can see, three quarters of my respondents were my students because I was teaching uh, lectures on uh, landscape symbolism or stuff like that. I asked also my friends and colleagues, and most of the respondents were in their 20s because they were students. Well, you can see, uh, let's say, frequencies of reactions, motives, objects, and there, there is no big difference between males, females, well. But there, is, there was a big difference in, uh, in various parts of the rock. Uh, as you can see on these graphs, for the photograph A and photograph B, uh, the whole surface of the rock was the most attractive for, for motifs, for the inner images. Much more than uh, the parts that I would uh, like to, to see as the most attractive. Well, that's the same information. And here we can see some examples of uh, the motives and objects, and uh, mostly people uh, would regard it as a two-dimensional object, as they see photographs printed on paper. But some people regarded the, uh, the rock feature as a three-dimensional object. Very interesting. 
Uh, but they were not on the site. Nobody was on the site except me and my, my colleagues. Well, here we can see that uh, most of the objects were interpreted as human beings or some kind of non-human beings sometimes resembling human beings, beings more, sometimes less. Uh, there also were some animals uh, or natural, uh, natural motifs like rivers and so on. And yeah, uh, here's a part that I was curious about. And as you can see, most of my respondents also see some kind of hat in that be it human head or non-human head. And uh, when, I, when I finished my, the, this experiment, or the, my, uh, the, my contact with the respondents, I took their drawings and put them above each other to search the patterns, graphic patterns. And here we can see the graphic patterns for the first photograph. There are 13 of them, and the, the number one is the most uh, frequent one of these. And about a third of the motifs can be uh, divided into these patterns. Here you can see patterns for the second photograph, and about 50% of them can be divided into some kind of a pattern. But uh, there is a difference if you ask people what do they see and they tell you or if you ask them to draw what they see. And you can see in these graphs that for some patterns, uh, my respondents had uh, different meanings, different interpretations. So I think it's uh, important to engage both kinds of data. And to conclude, Briefly, so I found out that uh, the rock surface, also in our culture and modern for modern people, uh, has a strong uh, capacity to provoke our projections or our imaginations, our inner images. Well, the relationship between uh, the image as a symbol and its meaning is arbitrary, so. That's why I think we should explore both drawings and uh, the interpretations, the words. Well, it proved to me that we cannot expect uh, everybody to see the same thing well, in the rock, nor the opposite, that nobody know, sees nothing there. And we may expect some kinds of patterns that can be shared uh, among the commun community but on the basis of their own experience. Well, that the people can uh, agree on what they really see. But there uh, has no, there doesn't need to be any authority to tell you what you shall see yeah. in, the, in the rock. And this, this, this one, I think, is very important, well, at least for me. Yeah. Well, by no means we or we cannot extrapolate these images into the past. It's impossible. It's just a uh, picture of our thinking or our imagination, contemporary. I do not want to relate these pictures to the past. And also the particular pictures or the precise numbers that I used in this presentation uh, are not so important for me as these conclusions well, about the processes, how we can see the rock or how we can create our uh, you know, images because sometimes people draw, they have they had some image in their head and draw it and, and sometimes they started to draw but gradually they change their image as they were creating it. Yeah, so it's not only about projection or quick, fast projection but also about uh, creativity. And well, as my final words, I, will, I would like to say that let's test our assumptions or our question 
uh, buy some empirical uh, study like, like this. Thank you for your attention.